The Sony A5000 was released back in 2014. Now, at the time, it cost around $600 new. Nowadays, you can find it used for around $130. How has this camera held up over the years? Pretty well, actually. I mean, you've got a 20 megapixel APS-C size sensor, a 460K dot LCD screen that flips all the way up for vlogging, and a pretty lightweight, small, compact design that's nearly pocketable with the right lens. Style-wise, the A5000 is kind of like the missing link between the old NEX line and the current A6000 line. The body is very reminiscent of something like, say, an NEX5, NEX6, NEX7. It's got that same texturized rubber grip on the right-hand side that really looks like those cameras. Uh, menu system, on the other hand, thankfully, is more like the modern Sony cameras. It has more of like a uh, Sony A6000 style menu. Uh, overall, it's a nice combination of old and new. And we should note, this entire video is being filmed on the Sony A5000 itself. Speaking of video, there's no 4K, but there is 1080p, and the A5000 does do 1080p pretty well, actually. Uh, it gives you the option of 24 frames per second and 60 frames per second interlaced. It's a bizarre omission, but there's literally no 30 frames per second on this camera. Autofocus on the A5000 is a little bit of a bummer. It only has contrast detect. There's no phase detect like you would find in the normal A6000 line. Still, having said that, Sony actually does contrast detect pretty well. I mean, the A5000 is, and I don't mean it in a bad way because I love Panasonic cameras, but it's much better than the majority of Panasonic cameras. Like, it's not that bad. But in terms of, like, the A6000 line, it's nowhere near as good as what you're used to with the A6000 line or the A7 line. Still, overall, autofocus is usable. It's decent. So, is the A5000 worth it, and who is this camera for? Well, if you're a casual user and all you want is a camera that has a flip-up screen so you can see yourself, you just want to hit record, walk and talk, film whatever you need to film, then yeah, the A5000 is great. You're going to get a really good-looking image out of it, and the audio from the camera's onboard mic is actually pretty decent. Having said that, if you're more of a serious user and you're kind of looking for, like, cinematic footage and especially, like, slow-motion B-roll, the A5000 is kind of a question mark then. Yeah, the image quality of the A5000 is good, but for one, there's no mic input, so you're going to have to record all of your audio externally. For Example, this video, because I've been filming on a 35 millimeter lens and the camera's kind of far away from me, I've just been using this Rode Smart Love and I'm recording it straight into my phone. The other thing that might put off serious users is that 60 interlace is just unusable for slow motion on this camera. You know, and it's, it's not all 60 interlace because like I had a video just like two or three weeks ago of that little Nikon S1. That camera filmed 60 interlace, but it looked good. It was nice and clean and smooth. It was exactly what you would expect slow motion B-roll to look like. 60 interlaced on this camera just looks bad. It just looks choppy. You know, and I've tried everything. I've filmed in good lighting. I'm filming in manual mode. I'm at 1 1 25th of a second. I've even tried de-interlacing my footage in post, and no matter what I do, the footage just looks kind of choppy and staggered and kind of... It just has a weird, mushy look to it that's just... I don't know, it's just unusable. Uh, you know, on the plus side, on the other hand, 24 frames per second on this camera looks great. You know, and I think for that reason, the A5000 is kind of a question mark for like more of a serious user. Especially when you consider the fact that the Sony NEX5R actually, am I getting an overheating warning? And another thing that's probably gonna be a deal breaker for a lot of users is this camera overheats. 
right in the middle of filming that bit, I got an overheat warning and it just shut off. And if you check online, you'll see that that's actually pretty common. See, that's the thing. The A5000 is great if you're just filming in short clips. But if you're in a hot environment like this and you start filming like 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute clips, it's going to overheat and you're going to have to just turn the camera off, let it cool off for a second and then turn it back on. And I think that's going to be a problem for a lot of people. Uh, anyway, I think that's all I've got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. <laughs>